the night sky guy segment right now here at the weather network i'm suzanne leonard good to have you with us and we welcome to this time slot i think for the first time andrew andrew fazikas on the line from montreal and let me just wish you a happy spring right off the top well thank you suzanne same to you big celestial event uh, today as well when we talk about uh, astronomical news i mean the equinoxes and the solstices of course are big events uh, tell us how we calculate these things and, and when it all started well really i mean the equinox uh, officially started at 7:44 eastern time this morning and the word equinox comes from the latin which means equal night and uh, and it's really it w the day is broken up into into basically equal parts of day and night and this uh, this is true for both northern and southern hemisphere uh, we are ushering in springtime while the folks in the southern hemisphere are ushering in fall and this happens uh, when the sun is basically uh, well as the earth go is going around the sun the sun appears along the equator and this only happens during equinox both fall and spring and as we tilt as the earth tilts towards the sun we get those not only longer days don't we Andrew but also the warmer days and we're already feeling and seeing signs of that in the weather across the country exactly and the, the weather is going to get warmer the shadows are going to get shorter and th on this day actually you'll see this tonight you can go out in a couple hours and see that the Sun is setting due west this is the only day that it rises due east and sets due west well that's very interesting I never thought of that before so we'll have to look for that setting due west tonight everyone and we're going to take a look at the uh, forecast in just a moment because we've got some clear skies in some part of the country uh, some parts and we've also got some very cloudy conditions in other parts of the country things to look for this weekend Andrew uh, and as you always like to tell people you don't necessarily need binoculars to do some amateur stargazing no no not at all and uh, if you go out say tomorrow morning and then uh, on Sunday morning and if you've got clear skies look at dawn if you can get up at dawn you'll see a a beautiful pairing of Jupiter and the crescent moon. This is a close encounter. You can be in the city as long as your skies are clear. You can really get a, a beautiful sight of, at dawn of Jupiter, which looks like a, a bright star-like point just to the left of the moon, the crescent moon. And so this will be on Sunday morning. And then following that on Monday, it'll, uh, the, the, the pair will start separating even more. So it's worth going out Saturdays, and then Sunday's the peak, and then Monday you'll see them separate. Okay, so all three mornings, but particularly Sunday. And remind me, you say to, to you always say it, in order to distinguish planets from stars, there's something you look for in terms of whether they're sparkling or not. Well, exactly. I mean, uh, planets uh, do not twinkle. Uh, like stars do, and that's because they're, it's a thicker beam of light. They're much closer uh, objects than stars are, so they penetrate right through Earth's atmosphere, and uh, they do not twinkle, so you'll notice that Jupiter is a very steady light. Speaking of the atmosphere, of course, uh, a lot of people were glued to their TVs last Sunday. It's always exciting to see a shuttle take off. The power my goodness, uh, and some pretty exciting developments. A long spacewalk today. What was it, six, six and a half hours or something? Six and a half hours of heavy work uh, by a pair of astronauts, and they have just finished, just, uh, just this afternoon, Friday afternoon, they just finished unfurling f uh, uh, two pairs of, of solar panels. And these are over 140 feet long. And what this does basically for sky watchers, again, if you've got good uh, sky conditions, over the course of next week, starting tonight, you'll get at least one or maybe two chances to see the space station. Now, the trick is to know when and where to look for it. People can go to my website and get exact times. Here's a picture taken just last night of the space station with the space shuttle docked to it, and you can see that the sky conditions weren't that great. They were cloudy, but because the pair is so bright, and with the new solar panels, it's so bright, you can see it even through uh, fairly overcast skies almost. Lots to look for. The space shuttle, Jupiter and Moon, especially Sunday at dawn, and a due west sunset tonight, Andrew. And we're just putting up the forecast. Thanks for all the tips that you've shared with us. Clear skies to everyone. Okay. Talk to you again soon. And here's Andrew's website.